Welcome to the History from the Archives. In this second episode, we'll talk about the life of one of the most celebrated persons in the world today, Ferdinand Magellan. But specifically, this discussion will focus on the life, on his early life as a young man before he earned his fame as a sailor in the Portuguese Navy. Despite the fame of Ferdinand Magellan, he remains to be an enigma to modern people, except for a few scholars um, on the biography of Magellan, most virtually know only certain um, perspectives certain details of his life but much less is our understanding of the young Magellan. The reason apparently is this. Magellan earned his fame when he landed in the Philippines and died and upon the return of the Victoria in 1523. But prior to that, he remains to be anonymous. Although he belonged to the lower nobility, his family did not occupy major positions in the royal household. And for that reason, he remains to be a virtually an anonymous guy in Lisbon and in Portugal at the time. He earned his fame, as I said, when the expedition uh, returned to Spain and discovered uh, the, the route, uh, the circumnavigation of the world that we know today. But he was, as I said, a nobody, especially if we try to go back to his early life as a boy and as a young man. For that reason, when he earned certain fame already, again, it created a lot of confusion because of the interpretations of his life given by respective sectors. For example, the Portuguese were extremely biased against him, and the Spaniards, though he earned fame and brought glory to Spain because of this circumnavigation, yet he became an enemy of a number of Hidalgos whom he condemned to death in San Julian. And for that reason, even the impressions, the interpretations, the respect, the perspective of the Spaniards were not actually very, very much favorable on him. So, he remains, as I said, to be a, a, an anonymous to most of us as to who he really was. Because much of what we get from the records, from history, were actually embedded in certain interpretations, mostly biased against him. So if we go back to his early life, virtually very little is written about him. Because, as I said, because he was simply a nobody. But then, scholars gradually begin to gather uh, details and archives begin to provide certain pieces into the puzzle of his early life. And because of that, we'll try to piece together whatever materials we have in reconstructing, so to speak, the unknown life of Magellan as a young boy and a young man uh, in Portugal before he earned global fame. One thing we know is that the Magalhães supposedly were not actually natives of Portugal. They were, uh, according to an American naval historian, they were actually coming from Normandy. They were, in a way, of French origin. And they migrated to uh, Portugal sometime around uh, the... the uh, 13th century, um, apparently to join the Reconquista 
uh, of the Portuguese uh, uh, monarchy against the the Moors, and uh, but some said that the uh, the Magalhães surface in the records about the 14th century only. But much of what we know today in history, based on available records, for example, the uh, chorographia, the records of the uh, you know, say, genealogical records of the prominent families, noble families in Portugal, mentioned uh, uh, certain uh, 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 names. For example, uh, it mentions of a certain Afonso Rodriguez de Magalhães and um, Pedro Jacques de Magalhães and um, uh, Pedro Jacques de Magalhães apparently sounds very very French uh, was mentioned in uh, in the chorographia to be in Portugal around 1470s but then we don't really know the connection between uh, Pedro Jacques de Magalhães to uh, Ferdinand Magellan the immediate uh, information we have that connects Magellan to his, uh, uh, the Magalhães, to Ferdinand Magellan, was that of Roy de Magalhães and uh, Alda uh, Mesquita, who were actually the parents of uh, Ferdinand Magellan. Um, but we know very little about Roy Magalhães. Uh, certain details would say that he was actually an Alcaide Mayor uh, of, um, of Abero. Uh, but then, other than that, we do not know anything anymore. But even do we, even the title of an alcaide mayor or alcalde mayor, um, is not very very clear to us what he was. Unlike in the Philippines, you know, an alcalde mayor is a governor. But there, we do not really know. He was a military officer, civilian officer. So even um, in this particular respect, uh, he, it remains to be. Um, uh, be clouded by uh, by the gaps of uh, history. Alda Misqueta, the mother of uh, Fernão Magalhães, as he was known in Portuguese, was actually was supposedly some some uh, sectors, some historians would claim that he probably descended from the Moors. He was a converted uh, Moor uh, because they said that the name uh, Misqueta. Uh, was actually referring to a mosque, so we don't really know uh, the the historical uh, basis uh, of this claim. Was it really true that Al uh, Alda was actually a, 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 a Moorish descent? Uh, with, but we do not know that. But as we, as you probably know, that by 1496, um, the Portuguese government, uh, the Portuguese uh, royalty. Uh, impose a certain kind of restrictions, in fact, a persecution on the Moors. They expelled the Moors and, um, and the children who were left behind by the parents were kept by the, by the uh, imperial government, by the government of uh, uh, Portugal, and were sent to certain families to be reared as Christians. But other than that, uh, we know very little about the family background, the, the, the background of the parents of Ferdinand and Magellan. We know also that um, they had uh, uh, Magellan had siblings. Uh, one of them was uh, a boy by the name of Diego. Then there were supposedly three sisters, Isabel, Teresa, and um, a woman by uh, uh, with a Gaelic name by the name of uh, Ginebra. Um, Although, again, the name Ginebra was actually controversial because uh, although she was identified as a sister of uh, uh, Fernão Magalhães, there is another uh, record which says that she was supposedly the daughter of Fernão uh, the Older. That's the phrase uh, that identifies a certain man by the Fernão de Magalhães the Older. But who was this Fernão de Magalhães the Older? Was he Ferdinand Magellan or was there another Ferdinand Magellan? But then there were certain uh, rumors, so to speak, uh, among, I would say, uh, chroniclers that Magellan was probably uh, also side. Uh, children outside wedlock and probably Ginebra was among these children that Magellan had sired 
So, but then historical records would show that Magellan was a typical uh, sailor at the time, that he had uh, women in every port, as they would say today, and uh, apparently uh, he in fact had a son uh, later on that we know that had a tremendous impact on the outcome of the Battle of Mactan, Cristobal Rabelo, who died in the Battle of Mactan and uh, was also supposedly, supposedly responsible for the death of Magellan because Magellan actually went to him when he was being uh, when he was about to die because it said that an arrow pierced through his uh, his body and it was a poisoned arrow and Magellan went to him to succor him but Magellan was uh, also ganged up by the natives of Mactan and so he died. And the reason why it is said that Magellan sacrificed his life for this man is because Cristobal Rabel was actually the son of Ferdinand Magellan. So that's what we know about Magellan and when he grew up a bit. But besides that, even the birthplace of Magellan remains also a controversy. The reason is because of the fact that we don't really know where he was born. We know he was born in Portugal. But where in Portugal in particular? There were two schools of thought in Portugal today. One of them was uh, uh, Jose Manuel Garcia, the author of this Fernando de Magalhães, Herui, Traidor, O Mito. And Garcia claimed in his book that Magellan was actually a native of Porto. He was born in Porto and not elsewhere and he provided very very interesting arguments for that and some uh, evidences on the other hand jose manuel marquez uh, the former mayor of sabrosa now the consultant of the president of portugal uh, on this uh, which prepares the celebration of the magellan uh, circumnavigation uh, was very very strong in his stand that magellan was actually born in Sabrosa, in his town. So it's very difficult to really determine where he was really born. But some historians tend to favor the Sabrosa um, hypothesis because of the fact that there was a house there which still stands today and as, as you can see, this house was supposedly the birthplace of Fernau Magalhais. In fact, it contained, as it could be seen, a coat of arms of the Magalhais. So, as I said, uh, Magalhais has a coat of arms because they belong to the lower nobility. Other than that, we virtually knew anything about him. But then, when he reached he, a little bit uh, when he was about 10 years old or 12 years old again it's not very very precise it is said that Magellan's parents died we don't know who died first whether they died together but then it says some chronicles say it's unfortunate uh, that the parents died so we can assume that probably one of them died earlier than the other or probably both of them died but then the point is uh, Magellan became suddenly orphaned and because of this, the relative of the of Magellan, the Sousa, among the prominent families of Portugal at the time, um, brought per, the young Fernão Magalhães to the royal palace in Lisbon, in the Castel uh, San Jorge, again, as you will see in the picture. And he there, he worked there. Uh, he became sort of a page of Queen Leonora and also studied um, the life of the, the, he studied in the court, in this royal court, because of the fact that he was a member of the lower nobility. And after that, we know very little again um, beyond this uh, account. But we know again about Magellan when he was already about 25 years old when, um, in 1505 when Magellan signed 
uh, or wrote down uh, his uh, will because he was signing up for the Portuguese Navy. And at the time, if you are going to join the Navy, you have to make your last will and testament, apparently because of the fact that there is so much uncertainty in the voyage. You probably will not return uh, after uh, in your expedition. So uh, he had to write down his last will and testament. And certain informations were revealed in the last will and testament. Uh, one of them, of course, is his, uh, indirectly was making a claim that he probably had sired a number of children there. He was, uh, he was making such kind of a uh, uh, confession that if ever I fail to take care of my children, if ever I have sired them, then uh, if I die, he should give this uh, whatever I have for them. So uh, indirectly, there is a certain affirmation on this. And he affirmed there that he came from the village of Sabrosa. But again, even in this testamento, uh, certain historians doubted this test the authenticity of this testamento. Uh, so from whatever we get, the little information provided by this 1504-1505 uh, testamento, uh, it was dust to pieces because of the uh, doubts raised by contemporary historians about the authentic authenticity of this testamento. They said that it's actually a forgery and was only written because of the uh, relative of Magellan was making a claim for certain benefits after Magellan died. And the claim was actually filed around 1567-1568, um, more than 40 years after Magellan, uh, more or less 40 years after Magellan's uh, death. And the reason is because uh, the king of Spain was supposedly going, was supposedly, uh, going to give certain kind of a compensation to the family of Magellan. But Magellan's family was virtually was already wiped out. Um, his wife died, his young son died, so there was no heir. And so the one who was claiming for this uh, benefit were his relatives. And historians would say that they were actually forgeries just to support this claim. So we virtually knew nothing about him. Thank you for watching this episode. I hope this provided you basic information about the young Magellan. For your questions, you may write it down on the comment section which will be answered in our next episode as we journey in our history from the archives.